So animal welfare assessments and audits are something that is very familiar in the swine industry. As an industry, we're very much a leader in being proactive in assessments and audits and really developing tools to help us ensure and kind of validate and verify what we're doing on farm meets with the expectations and standards of our consumers. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me this week in our podcast studios is Dr. Monique Paris-Garcia. Dr. Monique is an associate professor and veterinarian in global production animal welfare at North Carolina State University with the College of Veterinary Medicine. Monique, welcome back to the podcast. Um, I'm sure folks uh, have have heard you speak before or maybe caught our previous podcast, but if there's somebody out there in the audience that hasn't met you, why don't you start with an introduction? Perfect. Thanks so much, Clay. I'm really happy to be back. Um, As Clay mentioned, my name is Dr. Monique Paris-Garcia. I am an associate professor over here at NC State in the College of Vet Med, and I have a primary interest in pig welfare. Um, with a lot of my research focusing on animal welfare assessments and audits, as well as training and education for caretakers and producers on farm. Yeah. Well, and Monique, I know you're uh, you're skilled in all areas of animal welfare. You and I have chatted about euthanasia projects and things like that in the past. Let's talk today about animal welfare audits. Um, It's certainly something that's happening more and more commonly on farm. And I know I've got uh, producers who call me up and say, hey, I've got, you know, one of these packer welfare audit type things. Uh, Can you help me uh, get prepared and execute it so that I I get a good score on the test, for lack of a better term? You want to share kind of your thoughts on where we're at with uh, animal welfare audits and what work your team's been doing with them? Yeah, absolutely. So animal welfare assessments and audits are something that is very familiar in the swine industry. As an industry, we're very much a leader in being proactive in assessments and audits and really developing tools to help us ensure and kind of validate and verify what we're doing on farm meets with the expectations and standards of our consumers. So when you kind of think about assessments and audits, um, it's a little bit different. So an assessment like the Port Quality Assurance Plus and the site assessment that most of our producers in the United States are a part of is an educational tool to help ensure continuous improvement related to animal welfare issues. So when we think about an assessment, we're looking at what the animals look like, how they're dealing or coping with the environment in which they're in. We're also looking at the environment, the facilities, do we have issues with any of our penning or alleyways? And then we're also very much focusing on the training that's going on in the farm. So looking at standard operating procedures, records, interviewing caretakers. And so PQA plus and varying assessments that are really focused on the education part are wonderful because there's these great opportunities to have discussions and conversations with those that are working on farm. Audits are a bit different, tend to be the one that everybody gets a little bit more nervous about. And it's simply because it's more of a verification tool. So rather than focusing purely on the education component and continuous improvement, Audits are a really excellent tool for the swine industry to use to be able to validate and verify that what we say we're doing on farm, we're doing. And so within the United States, there's a bunch of different types of audits, whether you're in a niche market system or not. But by far, the common swine industry audit is going to be the most nationally recognized and used audit that we have on our commercial farms to date. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Very good. Monique, you've mentioned uh, a couple of times, you know, here in the U.S., this is kind of the audit platform that we have. Are we um, kind of plowing our own trail there or do other industries throughout the world do similar things with audits? Is there any perspective you can share internationally there for us? Yeah, the exciting thing about animal welfare and audits is it's kind of a new frontier sometimes. So when you start looking at audit systems, most of our audits are developed to try to exemplify the science science behind what animal welfare is and what makes good animal welfare. The audit is trying to encompass the values that the stakeholders have, 
as well as trying to recognize where we currently are in our industry and where we want to be. And so when you look at audits, either from the U.S. or from a global perspective, almost all audits are going to include three types of categories. They're going to look at animal-based measures. So those are measures that you're directly looking at your animal. So evaluating things like body condition, lameness, open wounds. Then we're looking at our environmental facilities, and then we're going to be looking at our protocols. So whether you're looking at an audit that's based more in the European Union or Canada or Latin America, that kind of foundation is going to be the same. What's going to be different is how we are going to kind of emphasize or weight each one of those measures and how we value that measure as looking at it from a more holistic standpoint. Yeah, it makes total sense, right? What what you value is what you should measure and where you should put your continuous improvement efforts. That, that makes total sense. Um, you mentioned the PQA, uh, the training and the site assessment uh, part of that. If if I'm trained on PQA and I understand those principles and I'm executing them every day at my farm, does it line up pretty good that my common swine industry audit should go well? I mean, are, is that education and training material going to enable me to have a, a good score on my common swine industry audit? Or are there some areas where maybe there's differences? If you're doing good on the PQA, it should be pretty mirrored what your CSIA is going to look like because we are looking at the same measurements. The major difference, though, is in the CSIA, we have points and thresholds assigned to specific measures, right? And one area that we're really working on, particularly with the Common Swine Industry Audit Task Force and National Pork Board, is really understanding these thresholds more. So whenever you're looking at an animal-based measure and you're going out and specifically looking at the pigs, you're looking at just a small population of those animals on farm. And that population is going to be determined by the number of animals you have totally on your site. So within that smaller population, we then are calculating what is the percentage or proportion of animals that have that particular condition. And so whether you're doing PQA or CSIA, the one thing you need to recognize is that your proportion might change based on that randomly sampled pig that the auditor comes out and looks at. What's nice about that is even if you are above that threshold or expectation, there's always a follow-up question that asks if those animals are being identified and taken care of. So from a producer standpoint, as long as you are managing the animals, as long as you have eyes on the animals, and you're treating those animals that may be compromised or may have some condition going on, you really are just going to be taking care of that individual animal welfare first and then working on that threshold if need be. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the animal-based measures. How many animals are we going to have to evaluate? You know, if I've got a bigger farm, maybe, a, you know, a 10,000 head sow farm or a finishing barn that's got, you know, space for 10 to 20,000 pigs, are we going to look at every individual animal or how does that part work? Yeah. So realistically, looking at every single animal is a very hard sell for anybody who's trying to do audits and anybody who's realistically trying to get through a farm. Right now for the CSIA audit, and which is similar to the pig care audit in, in Canada, they're using kind of previous work that was done from an epidemiology standpoint to diagnose disease on farm. So if you actually look at the table that's provided for either PQA plus or CSIA, the larger your farm system is, the less number of pigs you're going to be looking at. So if you have a 10,000 sow farm, we're really only sampling around 294 pigs. But if you had a 100 sow farm, you're going to be looking at all 100 of those animals. And that's the work that we're trying to do at NC State right now. We've really had this great foundation. Nobody really knew where to go with the sampling size and being realistic about the logistics and time spent on farm. We started with what we had, which was the best idea of how to diagnose or detect a prevalence of an issue on farm. Now we're working with Pork Board and we're working with the Common Swine Industry Audit Task Force to start actually detailing out that a little bit more, trying to understand what the true occurrence of these animal-based measures are on farm and getting a better idea of what that sample really represents. Sounds a lot like a diagnostic question. You know, we, we want to uh, test to see what the prevalence is in a population or if there are any pigs infected with a certain disease. We're probably not going to test every animal in the barn. Um, we're going to test a subsample that statistics would tell us is representative of the population. And uh, just like with diagnostics, right, in huge populations, you end up kind of getting the same number you need as like with a medium-sized population. 
Um, you know, the 30 blood samples, uh, probably Absolutely. producers and veterinarians are all very familiar with that one, right? We do 30 samples because in just about any sample size, any population size, we can detect up to a 10% prevalence with that sort of sampling approach. Is that kind of the same thought with common swine industry audit? Absolutely. And that's how we've always based it on. What we have kind of seen in our preliminary data is that we're dealing with animal-based measures that have a very, very low occurrence. So when we have kind of this information from the disease standpoint, we can feel confident that, okay, we can cite, we can identify or at least have one positive sample for an occurrence that's either between five or 10%. Some of our animal-based measures are less than 0.5% of our total farm population. And so that's a really wonderful win from the animal welfare standpoint, because when I go onto a farm, the ability for me to detect a problem of a compromised animal is very low. But from a statistical sampling standpoint and being confident that we are actually representing whatever that true population on farm, it gets a little bit more difficult. And I think the other major challenge that we're trying to wrap our heads around is that we're not necessarily trying to just detect if a disease is present or not, but we're trying to actually understand what that occurrence is on farm. And we're trying to apply this sampling size across at least 10 different measures from animal welfare, which we're just going to expect something like a body condition score of one on a finisher farm is going to be much different than looking at a tail bite or an open wound on a finisher farm. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. Very good. Monique, I uh, really appreciate you coming on here today and, and demystifying the common swine industry audit for a little bit for folks. You, you made a great point that it can be nervous anytime somebody comes to us and wants to assess us, right? Whether it's when we're kids in school and we have to do one of those like, you know, state assessment type tests or now when we're in our careers and somebody's going to come to our operation and, and see what it looks like and give us feedback. That's, that's a nerve wracking experience, but I think you've helped us to understand that there is a value proposition there. And, and even for areas where there's opportunities to improve, it's exactly that. There's opportunities to improve. And hopefully through this audit process, we can learn about those and make the farm even better. Absolutely. And I think really trying to view the welfare audit as a tool and a piece of data for every single producer to figure out what area they need help or support on and what area they're doing a really good job on. So keep it up. Don't worry. You see a welfare person coming your way. It's going to be okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Monique. I really appreciate you coming on. And to our audience, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have not checked out our website, please go to swinehealthblackbelt.com and check it out. Please like and subscribe to the podcast. Share it with a friend if you enjoyed this episode. Uh, and make sure that you catch up with all of our weekly episodes. For Dr. Monique Paris-Garcia, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and please have a great rest of your day. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.